All right. So we want to scroll through all of these elements, right? And we never know when it's done until the last element loads. So we're going to scroll through this manually the first time and look for that element. End of results. Let's see. Sometimes this will be this element will always exist and it's just hidden. So that will change or how we map this out or how we build this will change depending on that. Uh, this appears to just be created at the end rather than a always there and, and hidden. Uh, but let's confirm that. So we'll do that by searching within the DOM itself. We see it there. When we refresh it, we'll search it again to see if it's in the DOM and it is not. So what we can do here, and mm, I think that was, I think that was an ID, I hope so. Document get elements or get element by ID. It's not it, let's go through it again. Okay, we are looking for this end result splitter. That's there. Now let's double check it to make sure it doesn't exist when it first loads. Okay, good. Throw this in there. Null. Cool. So now we can write a condition that says if this is null, Scroll, otherwise don't. We'll leave that there for now. Let's look at the functions we need to create here. So here's our list of things we want to do. Let's create a scroller. Function. So we'll say function, call it whatever you want. I'm calling it this. And what we'll do here is we'll say window, scroll to, and we're going to start here, zero. This means we're going to go vertical scroll. So we're looking at the xy axis. As zero would be x, y would be one. We want to scroll vertically, not horizontally. And then we will say document body scroll height. Scroll height is going to scroll to the bottom. Scroll top would scroll to the top. Uh, one thing to note is if you're scrolling within some sort of uh, uh, sub window, you it can get a little bit tricky you have to figure out what that element is and then tell it to scroll within there but luckily we don't have to mess with that in this instance um, so what does this look like if we just scroll if we just execute this function it scrolls once cool we want it to scroll into like forever right until it's done so that's where the mutation observer will come in um, So let's create a variable. We'll call it um, um, mob. New mutation observer. We're going to pass a couple of arguments through here. Uh, the first will be the uh, mutation changes. Set 
that will be the actual observed element that we're looking at. Right. We're going to use an arrow function. This is ES6. If you're working in an old browser, you'd need to write it as function and then remove the arrow. This will work for our purposes. And let's create a variable uh, and toss this into it. Our end of scroll equals this. I'll say if end of scroll not equal to null, so if that element doesn't exist. Oh, wait. If the element doesn't exist, we're going to run our scraper function. So um, let's just create an empty function up here. We'll fill it in later. And we'll just log something in the console. Console log. And so if that, then we need to disconnect the observer. So we'll say disconnect. Uh, The JS function, and then we'll just stop the whole function by saying return rerun. Otherwise, else we want to run the scroller function we created. All right, I think that's all correct. Now we need to run this observer function. So we'll call it serve and we're observing the document here. And within the document, we're looking at the child list while it's true. And the subtree should do that as well. While that is true. Let's see this works. Hmm. Okay, it didn't run right, right away, and I think that's because it needs an initial mutation to kick it off. So we'll do that by um, well, let's see how this completes. Here. Okay, so it worked. All right, let's refresh the page, get to load again, and then what we'll do here is to get this to run, like to start scrolling to kick off the mutation observer. We'll have it scroll once, and so. Let's see, we'll take this out. Actually, we can just have this. Let's say set timeout. It's been an empty function here. And let's set a timeout for like a half a second. It'll wait a half second and then start running. There we go. Cool. It's running. OK, so now we need to create our scraper function instead of just logging here. Uh, I'm not going to go through all of that because that could get really hairy, but we'll I'll give you the, we'll go through the basics here, right? So 
Um, Facebook can be tricky because all the class names are all this random stuff that is somewhat static, but I'm not confident they don't change it somewhat regularly. Um, I mean, I guess they don't because I have some functions that work, but it's just, I don't know, not the best way to go about doing this. So we want to find something that looks like it's always going to be static, which is this. Um, so to get at that, we'd need to loop through all the divs and check and see if the um, if it has an attribute of data test ID. So we could say uh, our divs equals document elements tag name. This is going to get us every single div, which could be thousands. <laughs> we'll loop through them. Uh, not the most efficient thing, but it'll happen quickly. And we'll just throw this loop in here. Uh, so I equal zero. I is less than is the length of these. It's plus. And create another variable and call it attribute here and say is current iteration uh, get attribute. Yeah. And then we'll say if that attribute is equal to what we're looking for, and let's push this data into an array. We'll create an array up here. Push. And then we'll push the div in the text. And then finally, we'll just console log what that is here at the bottom, that array. Yeah, so then Let's see, what was the ID browse result content? Or not ID, but the attribute. So if that attribute is equal to this, then we're going to do that. Let's see, refresh this page on our script. Oops. Divs, not div. All right. Oops. But it does look like that was working. Run it one more time. Okay, let's look in here. We might need to grab the parent element. So this gives us the content, but it looks like it might not give us the link. Does it? All right, well, in any case, it's probably good for you to know how to get go up the DOM tree here. So we want to go up into a parent element. Here's the first parent, second parent. So we want to go two parents up. So we do that by saying, Parent element and parent element. Oops. Parent element again, and then the inner text of that one. All right, let's try it. And you wouldn't necessarily want to do inner text. You're going to want to go through and grab the different DOM elements, but I'm not going to do that right now. The purpose of this is just to show you how to use Mutation Observer to uh, scroll indefinitely until the element that you're seeking is, um, or until it exists. Here we go. So now we have an array of all these. Um, yeah, cool. Now, something to note again, if you're, for example, looking to grab information off of Slack, you would need to scroll top here instead of scroll height. And uh, you know, obviously the ID would be something different. You'd need to figure out what that was, but um, this will get you started. Hopefully this helps. Have fun.